Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tennessee Valley Toastmasters meeting on July 31st, uh, 2021. And today we will be having a special meeting because it's the fifth meeting of the month where we'll have a panel discussion run by Susie. And to start off with, though, I will read the club mission and, uh, and Toastmasters values. And as a club, we provide a, well, I need, maybe I should look at the right, uh, Maybe I should be looking at the agenda, sorry. There it is, okay. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. And we follow the Toastmasters values of integrity, respect, service, and excellence. And I will now introduce our Toastmaster for the day, Susie. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I can't have the flag and the timing thing open at the same time. If somebody has a flag, they can pop up real quick. I'd appreciate that. Uh, Sh Sharon has a flag. Okay. Awesome, thank you. So um, let's salute the flag together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Sharon. This session is being recorded. We all know how we feel after a dynamic club meeting. You know, few things are better. We sign off and we're just jazzed and inspired and motivated. But we also know how we feel when only a few reliables sign up in advance. And in that situation, some members end up covering two or more roles. And member dissatisfaction can creep in and ultimately we may lose members because of that. Having a solid foundation of engaged members stimulates member growth because prospective members see meetings that are fun and, and they hear about the great member experience our club offers, which also leads to higher retention, which in turn drives member achievement. Today, we have three experts on the topic of member engagement and retention. Each panelist will present a five to seven minute compelling speech from their perspective and working from a Pathways project. And this will be followed by a short Q&A session. As you listen to each panelist, jot questions that come to mind. Please keep your questions short and to the point. We'll take as many as we have time for. My name is Susie Proctor. I joined Toastmasters in 1997 and I've served all the leadership roles in my home district in Western Washington, District 32. Two distinction. I served as international director between 2006 and 2008 and received an international presidential citation in 2009. I served on various committees and campaigns in the years since. I've earned four distinguished Toastmaster designations and I've been a member in District 77 since 2015. As a moderator in the project, it is my job for keeping time as well. Timing rules for a standard five to seven minute speech applies to each of the panelists. The green light will come on at five, the yellow at six, the red light at seven with the 30 second grace to close. For the Q&A, standard table topics timing will apply one to two minutes, the green light will come on at one, the yellow at one and a half, and the red at two minutes with the 30 second grace to close. 
So now let's get to the panel. Our first panelist is Sharon Cowling. Sharon is a cyber analyst with a science background. She's been an active member of Toastmasters since April of 2015. And most of her six years, she served in various club uh, officer roles where she kept a close eye on membership metrics. Our second panelist is Shantane Rule Bullock, who joined Toastmasters in 2013 and is currently a member of two clubs in two districts. She's served as Vice President of Public Relations, Vice President of Education, President, District Social Media Team Manager, <gasps> and is currently serving as Vice President Education, District Logistics Manager for District 77 Toastmasters. In Sean Tain's spare time, she's also a software engineer, multiple business owner, and a mentor to help entrepreneurs reach their goals. Our third panelist, Monica Tucker, joined Toastmasters in 2016 and has served in club and district leadership roles ever since. She earned Distinguished Toastmaster within two years and is the current District 77 director. That's the top of the food chain for you newer Toastmasters. In her personal life, Monica serves as mission chair and educational advocate for North Alabama Alzheimer's Association and is the national director for the National Management Association. She serves as a board member on the IPC committee, which is a trade association whose aim it is to standardize assembly and production requirements of electronic equipment and assemblies. Monica is a passionate doTERRA Juice Plus and Norwex advocate and a newly minted yaya. Congratulations. As of April 28, living her best self with more to come. Now, each panelist has an, ass uh, an assigned evaluator who, for the purposes of this project, will provide written evaluations from the various pathway projects and that each panelist is working through. But with gratitude, they are, and raise your hand, Rebecca Tipton, Natalie Yuley, Samantha Brinkley, and Charles Walston. So please let's give them a round of applause right now. <laughs> okay, we'll now begin the panel discussion. Our first panelist is working from the Effective Coaching Path, Inspire Your Audience, Level 3 Elective, and she ponders these questions. Do you ever notice when some fellow members stop coming to meetings? Do, do you pay attention who is missing from the meetings? Are you aware when members do not renew and leave the club? Why do members seem to disappear every year? And what can be done about the disappearances? Sharon feels member turnover is a troubling situation that almost every Toastmasters club faces at some point. She's been investigating member retention turnover because she is concerned about it. Sharon hopes to shed light on the situation and offer solutions to improve member retention. Let's find out more from Sharon Cowing as she invites us to prioritize Member retention, Sharon. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, Madam Toastmaster. We don't have any guests, that's okay. Member retention, a subject near and dear to my heart. My nature is analytical in such that I'm observant and I look for patterns. I've noticed a pattern just about every year where members are leaving the club. And I am surprised and baffled by this and concerned. The club needs members to stay alive. Members are the lifeblood of a club. No members, no club, it's game over. Prioritizing member retention is critical for everyone to enjoy the benefits of the Toastmasters program and the meetings. 
Let's take a quick look at some statistics from TI, our headquarters. I don't wanna to spend too long on them, but this shows us the reality of what we are working with. Okay, it's my first time doing it, so bear with me. So right here, we have a nice infographic from headquarters of the whole world. And as you can see on the left-hand side, there's a, a wide range of numbers of retention rates. So that's keeping members. And we have our home region area, North America. So they're looking at retaining less than 46% and greater than 65%. To me, that's if you're losing half, that's a lot, 50% is a lot. I mean, think about if 50% of your bank account was suddenly gone, like those are some big numbers. And our, this is three years ago, but this is pretty, pretty descriptive. I have three different uh, charts of this, but we are in, our district is that pink where we retained 56 to 60 people or members, that means the opposite is that we lost 44 to 40%. That's pretty big. And if we go into the next year, it's about the same. I can, these are from the website. I can put them in the chat later. And then last year we got hit a little bit harder. Uh, we lost 51 to 55%. Um, COVID didn't help anything. So now that we've looked at some statistics and to show you that my suspicions are really true, because our club is not immune to these. Let's always remember that numbers represent people. These are members just like you and me and the faithful we see here. So another, I like visuals, another way to visually represent what it looks like for a club to lose numbers or people is this way. I have made a little <laughs> Lego minifigure club to represent us. There's 20, as you can see here. So let's say we lost 35%, which is the higher range. For a, member, for a club of 20, that's seven people. Let's see what that looks like when they leave. One, two, Three, four, five, six, and seven. Wow, look at that difference. That leaves 13 people. So we lost all of these people <laughs> and we have 13. Let's say we lose half, which has happened very recently. So that means we lose three more. So all our astronauts are gonna leave. There's one, two, five, Benny, three. So that leaves 10, 10 members. This is troubling because that means uh, these people have to keep the club going. They have to fill officer roles for the club. There's seven officer roles. There's five to seven meeting roles and meetings. So they're constantly doing a lot of the things that are necessary. There's 10 people left to mentor. There's a lot of things that go on. And just think if we could have kept all these people, we have a bigger pool to work from with keeping members and developing them up into maybe even district leadership. And we're constantly trying to get back to what we lost because our DCP says you need 20 members. And it's, they say it's easier to keep a member than get a new one. And so I just hope that that shows you the impact and to just increase awareness of what it looks like and how it impacts our club because those core members they can get burnt out because they are doing so much to carry the weight of the club. Why do people leave? That's a great question. I can't really get into it right now because of my time limit. I do have an article that I'll post a link to in the chat, but I can share a personal example. I almost left Toastmasters. I was 
my company was closing. I was looking for a new job. It was a very scary time for me, but there were some strong connections. Susie and Monica, <clears throat> they were very supportive and they, they didn't let me leave. They encouraged me and supported me and showed me the benefits. And I'm really glad that I stayed. So a warning sign is typically what I've seen the pattern of is members are missing meetings. So my hope and prayer is that when members start missing that, well, first that we make strong connections so that people come and you notice when they're gone. And that if they're missing maybe more than three meetings that you just reach out and you say hello and not just at renewal time when we're asking for money. How are you doing? That can go a long way to show that we care and that we want you to come back. Madam Toastmaster. All right, wow. Awesome, awesome. Let me get my stuff back up here. Whoop, where'd you go? I can't see you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Our next panelist is working from the present mastery, presentation mastery path, level five, elective, leading your volunteer organization as she navigates the questions surrounding motivation. Motivation is great. We get motivated on a new plan, a new idea, a new business, and we start executing and after a while, things start to fizzle out. We, we don't feel the same momentum. We don't care as much. And the truth is, it is not only what we do, but also what we do not do for which we are accountable. Today, Shantane explores how facing both helps her get committed and stay committed. Please help me welcome Shantane Robolek as she takes a unique look at the woman in the mirror. Shantane. I got more done in four weeks than I did the past four years. Man, it was a milestone moment in a story that I'm still writing. In 2016, after a two year period, losing my mom and then my dad to cancer and everything that that entailed, I recognized, you know what? I don't like asking permission to take care of my family. The job that had always represented comfort and security now felt like constraints and suppression. You know what? I'm growing my side gig into a full-time income. And so I joined the group to learn, how do you do this? and life kept on happening. Still grieving, I was distracted and disorganized. I lost my son that year, but gained three grandkids to do and plan for. Before I knew it, four years passed by. And when the 2020 pandemic brought that world to a screeching halt, I took a breath to reflect, to regroup and rejoin that group. My mentor taught me that accountability is taking ownership of your results with three simple steps. Think bigger, move faster, and be stronger. Step one, think bigger. When you change your vision, you change your outcome. It's so much easier to default to the present than to imagine a different future. Jim Rohn said, if you don't design your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. I learned about taking ownership of my future self with deliberate practices. When I take time regularly to imagine what my future self sees and feels and experiences when I've reached my goal, when I talk to her, I challenge my thoughts and decisions by, hey, what does Sean, the future Shantane think about this? It helps me keep the big P 
picture in mind and gives me instant clarity on the choices that I make. And when I don't, it shows. I like to think there's a future me who is glad I never gave up. Step two is move faster. We all face two kinds of expectations, those outer expectations and those inner expectations. Outer expectations are the request from others, such as a request to load the dishwasher from your partner, deadlines from your boss, and requests from your VPE to select a role and come to each meeting. Inner expectations are requests from yourself, such as plans to clean your closet or complete your next pathways level. Gretchen's, Gretchen Rubin's book, The Four Tendencies, explains how our personality traits tend to guide how we respond to both inner and outer expectations. And on what end of the spectrum, Shantaine could just wake up in the morning and think about what's on her schedule and her to-do list because she wants to avoid letting herself down and others down. While on the opposite end of the spectrum, Shantaine just resists all expectations, inner and outer alike, and never accomplishes any of the goals she sets for herself. We know it's easier to blame or find excuses and it's much more challenging to just look in the mirror when facing the reality of missed goals and opportunities. For example, I found out I have a better chance of meeting a deadline I set for myself if I told someone else about it. Once I understood how I respond to both outer and inner expectations, I can identify my weaknesses, work with my strengths, and move faster towards achieving my goals. Step three, become stronger. Life doesn't get easier, we get stronger. We all fall into habits which create our system for doing life. Stephen Covey says, your systems are perfectly designed to get the results that you're getting. Don't like your results? Then change your habits. Use what you've learned about yourself to create new habits that serve you. There's a great book, The Power of Habit, that explains how habits are simply cue, routine, reward loops, and change can be achieved by focusing on developing keystone habits to achieve small wins. My mentor taught our group to work with a partner, develop weekly habits to create a small win every week. And I easily completed several projects that I had struggled through for years. And it wasn't just me, so did my partner and other members of the group. I recently worked with a small volunteer group and each person joined to further their own goal. There were expectations of them as a group also, just like we have here as our Toastmasters Club. And I could see these same principles at work and not in the results that the members and the group achieved. I joined Toastmasters because I recognized I have a problem with confidence and clarity when I speak with others. It's not a great way to build a business. My challenge is to look in the mirror, to think bigger, move faster, and become stronger. I challenge you to do the same. I heard a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done. Everybody was sure somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody was angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it. Nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. The story ends with everybody blaming somebody after nobody did what anybody could have done. Back to you. Madam Toastmaster. Awesome, awesome. Get my thing back up here. Hopefully I won't knock myself out again. All righty. Shantane and Sharon, thank you so much. I enjoyed your, your, your panel discussions are so different and our next panelist will make it even more so. <laughs> Our next panelist and final panelist is working from the persuasive influence path. 
Level two, understanding your leadership style and flexing her leadership ability. One of Monica's favorite quotes is Gandhi's, be the change you want to see in the world. And since she joined Toastmasters in 2016, she sees the need for change to communicate Cation and leadership. She's working to be the change she wants to see in the world. By being in district leadership, Monica has the opportunity to encourage members to get all they want and to grow others. As a district 77, as district 77 members, we need to show up for events, meetings, and conferences, but our change doesn't stop there. We also need to step up to any challenges within the club, area, division, or district. Step up to grow your skills and to become a more agile leader, mentor, officer, or member. Leadership isn't about making all the decisions, but working with others to mentor, coach, and encourage. Let us welcome and join in with Monica Tucker to learn more about leadership agility. Monica? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. When I first joined Toastmasters, my goal was to just get better at speaking. That was what I wanted to do. I didn't realize there was a whole other world that I would embrace, which was leadership. I was kind of conned or told to do my first officer, club officer role. And from there, I kept doing club officer roles until I was president of Tennessee Valley. <clears throat> I've also been a club officer in other clubs. So I've had the chance to experience not only all the officer roles, but to really delve into my leadership style, because as I advanced through the different levels, I found that I had changed my style somewhat. As a engineer in a male dominated field, I've always had to be more aggressive, or at least that's how men perceive you. And that's not usually the case. And as I moved into Toastmasters and other uh, memberships, I found that I was more of a strategic leader. I wanted to involve other people. I wanted to help them grow and help them see what they could do. And I know that as I've done this and I, I've grown those skills and at times you do have to be autocratic. You have to kind of take that reign and, and find those somebodies because there's a lot of nobodies out there and nobody wants to do that. And you have to get them to see that they can do that. And part of being agile is to move quickly and easily. And that's where the agility comes in. You have to be able to change how you do things. If COVID has shown us anything, it's that the normal can change on a dime. And we have to be willing to accept that change and to embrace it and to really grow ourselves. I'm a lifelong learner. And as such, I constantly read books. I attend different webinars. I go to different sessions. I'm always learning. So I am a John Maxwell coach and mentor. And one of the books that I've been reading is the 15 Laws of Growth. And within that, it talks about self-talk. And I really didn't think about this until I was reading it. And then it's come up in several conversations since then. Self-talk, it's usually negative. It's you talking internally to yourself and you're telling yourself, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't, I, too much for me. I can't achieve that. And the self-talk, you need to really monitor that. You need to make that more positive. You need to make that benefit to you because that's what you're hearing in your head, in your thoughts every day. And I really didn't think that much about it until I had several conversations and I'm like, you know, there is something to that because if you always hear negatives, then that's how your mindset will be. And in the John Maxwell book, they reference another book called The Answer. And it talks about Within our lifetime, as we grow up, we hear on average about 150,000 no's. And along that same lines, you only hear about 5,000 yeses. So that's 30 times you're being reinforced with, I can't. 
I'm not good enough. So that sets you up to have that negative self-talk. And that will keep you from finding what leadership skills you potentially may have. And when I was, as I moved through the leadership and the district, I've had to learn different personalities, how to navigate that, how to make sure that people understand they are valuable, they do have great ideas. We might just need to harness it and understand what they're coming from and getting them to really be involved. Showing up is half of the problem, as Sharon mentioned with membership. It's the same way across all platforms. If you are involved and engaged, you're going to get what you put into it out of it. And showing up is the first half of it. And the next part of it is stepping out of your comfort zone. Become something that you didn't know you could be. You might have leadership skills you never realized you had, or you might be the next president. Okay, that's a little reach, but it can happen. Uh, there's been many leaders that have really shown up, stepped up, and excelled. And that's the vision that I have for Toastmasters. Recently, I was on a panel discussion in our company with the vice presidents and different directors. They were all women. It was a women's leadership discussion panel. And I got some great tips and advice. And one of the ones that really stuck with me and that I've really ran with over the last few months, it's not going to come to you. You have to take those steps. You have to go get it. You have to engage your life and whatever you want, you go for it. And that really stuck with me, especially being in leadership in several different companies and different board members. I have a chance to interact and really learn those skills. And that has helped me become a better leader and to grow. And I am always learning. I will admit when I'm wrong, that's a good leader to me. I have had some leaders, it's their way or the highway and you can't do any right and they don't praise. And that's, that's just not the kind of leader that I want to be. And I want to make sure that as I grow through leadership, that I'm able to mentor others so that they grow. And that's why when I ask people to show up and step up, I want them to be the change that they want to see in the world, like I do. Madam Toastman. All right. Wow. <laughs> Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? <laughs> I loved all three of your presentations. At this time, we're going to enter the Q&A portion of our panel discussion. If you have a question for the panelists, please enter it in chat directly to me. If you have a question, yeah, if you have a question, not to the panelists and not to everybody. And again, my name is Susie. Um, you want to state who the question is for, Sharon, Shantane, or Monica. And remember to keep your question concise and to the point. Also, again, for the benefit of our panelists, it is table topics timing. So one, one and a half, and two minutes with a 30 second grace to close. Uh, can Shantane provide a quick list of the books she referenced? Yes, she can. And so can M Monica if she referenced any and Sharon as well. Okay, so looking at the chats here, let's see. Oh, speaking of Shantane, here's a question for Shantane. Uh, what's, what's more important, meeting external or internal expectations? What's more important, meeting external or internal expectations? Shantane. I read a wise statement that said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And what that meant to me is, I believe that when you focus on finding your own strengths, and working with on your strengths and being accountable to yourself to reach your own goals, 
as a part of a group, if each of us are doing all of that, if each of us are pulling and looking at our own selves to reach our own goals and doing the things that that requires, it automatically guarantees that the group itself will benefit and will profit from that. So I say there's not really a, uh, a priority in inner or outer, focus on, focus on those inner goals and you will definitely benefit the outer goals. You will de definitely benefit the group. Thank you. Wow, staying in time. It looks like we're getting several questions. Um, here's one for you, Sharon. How can members, new or longstanding, learn who the members are in the club that are not regularly attending meetings? How can members, new or longstanding, learn who the members are in the club that are not regularly attending meetings? Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for the question. That's a great question. Um, like, for example, today, I counted 10 members and we have 20. So we've got 10 missing. Who's missing? So my first thought is, I have a couple ideas. The first one is, utilize our web so, website, excuse, the free Toast Host. You sign in. There's a, well, we have a public member directory and a private member directory. And we have a very good VPM who is managing the membership in the website. So if you sign in and you go to the private, you will see everyone listed. Hopefully they've put their picture, but there should be contact information. So you can pull that, you could save that. There's ways to export it. And that way you can see who isn't there and maybe connect with them. Um, also, if you're new, your mentor, this is a good discussion to have with them because you can look at that website and you can kind of talk about who the people are and find out more about them and, and what they're doing and, and be more aware of that. So I appreciate that question. Back to you. Thank you, Sharon. All righty. We're trying to keep this even. So the next question will go to Monica. Monica, are there other ways to serve besides being a leader? Are there other ways to serve besides being a leader? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. There are absolutely ways to serve and you don't have to sign up for those club officer roles. We can always have you partner with that officer and you kind of help them kind of as an assistant. That helps you learn the roles and it also helps you see what's involved with each of the roles. And the VPE is the person that probably needs the most assistance. I know Shantae's probably gonna shake her head, yes. <laughs> and that's the club role that has the, the most work. And they, not that the other roles are not key or important, but the VPE is kind of front and center along your path of Toastmasters. And then as you move into area division or director district roles, you can serve on committees. We have all types of committees throughout the year. We are constantly looking for members so that we have fresh ideas, new ideas, people coming in that maybe hasn't seen the inner workings and they can really offer us a lot of useful information. So there's definitely opportunities there. If you're willing to step outside of those comfort zones, you can grow, Madam Toastmaster. Awesome, wow. Okay, we're, we're really getting some good questions here. Sharon, back to you. What is a common reason that people disengage in Toastmasters and what is a solution to combat that? Wow, that's a great question. So that the article I put in the chat, definitely read that later for your homework, but a, a common reason for checking out. So I tried to find this information out. I actually pulled the prior members from the club website. There were about 60 and I emailed them all a short survey. Why did you leave Toastmasters? Did you achieve your goals? And what could we have done to make you stay? I got about seven responses. So not a whole lot of data on why they left. So 
I've recommended that exit interview when people, before they decide to leave or at that time to get that information so that we can do better as a club. Um, but some of the reasons I got through looking around are, well, some um, feel overwhelmed because we put too much on them too soon. So they want to have a, their goal is to just give speeches maybe or to do table topics. But all of a sudden we're asking for member roles. We're asking them to be an officer. We're kind of throwing them into the deep end and it's cold and we need to like let them walk into the pool and get comfortable <laughs> with the program. And I've seen that when clubs have low numbers and we're, we're just, we're desperate in a way. Um, some other reasons are people don't feel appreciated. When was the last time we said thank you to someone who's serving a lot? Um, sometimes life gets busy and they get overwhelmed um, by personal reasons. But to me, I mean, that happens, but that could be like 10 to 15% of the reason there are other things going on. Um, and the final one could be that people think they achieve their goals, but that was discussed at the TLI last week. And this is a, if you don't use it, you lose it. Because John Maxwell says, you're either moving forward or you're sliding back. So if you stay in Toastmasters, you maintain, there's a maintenance mode, you maintain those skills and you can give back to others. But if you leave, you start sliding back and losing those skills. Back to you, Susie. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, this one didn't have a name assigned to it, but I'm going to ask Shantaine to take this question. Um, as a new member, I have a concern in the back of my mind. My concern is that I will improve my skills with virtual Toastmaster meetings, but that it won't translate into proving in actual face-to-face -face meetings at work. My question is, did any of the other seasoned members, panel members have this concern initially and what was their experience over time, even though virtual meetings are new things? If I heard the question correctly, it was the skills learned on the Zoom may not translate into at work uh, in person. Okay. Yes. Ooh, that's a that's a great question. One of the the core things that I have found with both Zoom and having already for 30 years experience at work <laughs> is that some of the problems are still the same. You still have to think quickly and on your feet. You still have to think with clarity and, and express yourself with clarity. So even though on Zoom, it presents a different way of, for instance, I'm not looking in this camera like I should be. <laughs> you know, it presents some different ways of presenting yourself. Some of those same concepts work even when you're at work, because often I've noticed at work, people will give a presentation and they're looking at everybody but the people. But there's a thing that you can do when you're actually given a presentation is pick out one person and talk to them. And that person and everybody else thinks, you know what, she's talking to me. Those same skills that we are learning on Zoom, we get to practice them in what they call a microcosm, you know, and then we can expand it out if we finally or when we finally get into those in-person meetings. So I think that you're really getting a chance to practice what you have in a, in a positive and supporting environment that can easily translate when you get out into the world, not at work, but in everything that you do out in life. Back to you. Ah, oh, really good. Okay, last question. And, and Monica, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address this question to you, even though it was assigned to somebody else, because I think you're going to be somebody who can answer it the best. What's the best way to have the core members who carry the weight of the club and do the most for the club not get burnt out if no one is stepping up? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. When I was president, we had very small numbers and we always went to the same people over and over. And I know that it got to be taxing at times for some of them. I always try to engage each person and find out what help do you need? 
I might not be able to get it to you, but I'm going to see what I can find, what resources. And I've been able to translate it that into different areas as well. Because if you just assume they're all doing fine, then that's wrong on you. And you need to really ask them questions. Some people won't step up. I'm one of those people. I'm a person that will not ask for help. I will keep doing and doing and doing. And I don't quit. So that's not in my vocabulary. I will get it done one way or another. And the results might not be what I was going for. But I don't like to see other people struggle that way. So I always try to ask them, what can we do to help you? Do you need help? And some people just won't, they won't raise their hand and say, I need some help. And that is a lesson I've had to learn the hard way. I now, I go looking for people. I <laughs> ask for help. You know, they might tell me, no, that's okay. I'll go to the next one. I'll go to the next one. There's, uh, there's going to be someone I'm going to be able to find that's willing to step up there and learn and grow and help. Madam Tosa. Awesome. All righty. All right, let me get rid of this thing. Oh, well, okay, the light's gonna stay on. I'm distracted looking for it. <laughs> so let, let's wrap this up. This does conclude our panel discussion. We, the panelists, and I would like to thank you our audience who were engaged and provided great questions for the panel. And we would also like to recognize once again, our panel evaluators, Rebecca Tipton, Natalie Yuley, Samantha Brinkley, and Charles Walston. We appreciate your time and effort and your considerations. Yeah, and now at this time, it gives me great joy to return control of this meeting to our club president. But before I do, I want to announce the winner of our club newsletter contest and the recipient of the $25 Amazon gift certificate. Sorry, he's not with us right now, but it goes to Tom Stramilio, voice of the valley our newsletters will be released the third saturday of each month i have been receiving member spotlights thank you for sending them to me charles walston was drawn to be our first member spotlight and let me tell you i i loved his spotlight responses i can't wait and now i Return this to you, Madam President, Natalie Yuli. Thank you, Susie. I have one thing I want to ask if there would be any potential volunteers for or if anyone knows of someone that would volunteer for this is Susie okay so it'll be a team effort Natalie I I take notes of all the no this is I... not for secretary oh, this is something okay. else oh sorry I jumped the gun sorry sorry yes this is something else okay, sorry currently as division a director I stand as your area director and I'm area director of two areas because I'm lacking two area directors. If you or anybody you know is looking to get their DTM or just simply wants to experience anything in regards to the experience of being a district officer, you have no competition. And I will help you get into that role right away and give you any help you might need because I need it. <laughs> so if, I mean, I'm not voluntolding any of you, but I would appreciate anyone who is willing to step up and help me. That's all I wanted to say. 
Let me add and, to that, Natalie. I think it would be a great learning experience for someone and we will be there to support you. It's not just Natalie. There's other division area and district officers that are there to support you and help you understand the role and to really work the role. And to me right now, area director is probably one of the, it's not easy, but because we're virtual, it makes it a little bit easier for you to visit your clubs. Yeah, it, it does make it easier and arguably the hardest part of the year ends today because REF had to get all the club success plans. <laughs> so it's a matter of, uh, of just visiting clubs and filling out reports and helping the clubs from this point forward. Um, and like I said, I'm not volunteering anybody, but if anyone has interest in it, you can email me at natalie.uli at gmail.com. Whenever you feel like, yes, I wanna do this, so that could be as soon as you want to. Um, anyway, I, I just wanted to say that. And otherwise, I don't think we have any high level announcements for our next meeting. Um, do we have the roles filled out? It does not look like we do. We don't even have any speakers. So I'll let Shantane take over to poke people uh, to get them to fill out roles. All right, give me just a moment, please. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you guys. Hold on. I'm on a new computer, so it didn't go automatically. So that would be August. Can you believe it's August already? Yeah. So August 7th, we do not have the, well, let's say who has. We have Toastmaster Sharon. The timer is Susie. Vote counter is Sharon. And that is it. So every role is available. Who is working on their next path and would love to speak? I send you a direct message. All right, thank you. I can't, I can't read though and do this at the same time. Oh, if you yeah, don't get but somebody to sign up, I'll do okay. an educational moment and apply it to a path. Okay, oh yes, I, I, I'll, I took me off of the educational moment, but you can put one there. That would be great. As a speaker, though? If you don't get another speaker. Got it. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm not available. I've got district training all day next Saturday. Christina just volunteered for table topics, so thank you. All right. So who, who does want to, who will be here and would like to do... Uh, to the grammarian, that's an easier. Oh, and we have a new role too, a vote counter. So vote counter, you know, you don't even have to talk other than because you, you just send, <laughs> you send the vote directly to the Toastmaster. So if you, we have a new role now, vote counter. If you, anybody wants to sign up for that, you can do that over and over and over again. All right, so I-, I Sorry, Shantane, I can do, um, did you say the grammarian? Grammarian. Um, is it, I, I guess I could do both of those, the vote count and grammarian if you need me to. I'll be at the house. I'll okay. be oh yeah, that's right, you'll be here. Thank you. You rock, Deborah. that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I signed up for GE, so. Let's see, we got vote counter is sharing. Oh, but that's why she needs to not do the same thing, so. Put Deborah down for that. All right, and you signed up, signed up for general evaluator. There you are, yes. Okay, I don't wanna to take too much time. So 
Uh, no speakers. I know there are people who want to, after all of our motivational speeches, <laughs> <laughs> want to get started on their path. So you still have time. Think about it. Go over here. Go to the, the calendar and put yourself down as a speaker so you can get started on your path. Anyone else? And I will give, give the reins back to you, Madam President. All right. Thank you, Shantine. And if nobody has any other announcements, we can stop the, oh, Susie. So I saw your earlier call for secretary and uh, so whoever takes the secretary position doesn't get official recognition for that, but I don't need that kind of recognition. So I take notes for the meetings already anyways, and I need them for the newsletter. So I don't mind doing like a, a recap of who did what and who were our guests and the number of members and that kind of stuff, and then send it out as a secretary's report for each meeting. I can do that. But there's something that needs to be done for secretary up, uploading on Club Central or something. So I'll have to talk to you about that because I'm not exactly sure what all the, what all the responsibilities are because I haven't done that for a long time, so. So are you saying that you're willing to do both of those officer roles? My role is vice president of public relations and I can do the secretary role just because to fill the gap, but I'll want you to, I, I didn't take secretary training, so I'm not exactly sure what the new things are since I was secretary uh, maybe yeah, 13, I, 14 years ago. <laughs> I was planning that we would share the responsibilities okay. as officers until we found someone. But regardless, um, we can stop the, the recording at this point. Um, 